I'm Rebecca Birrell. I write about women's art in the 20th century, and I've been asked to choose a painting from the 1930s. I've selected Edinburgh Interior from 1937. Between 1936 and 1941, Barnes Graham maintained her own studio at 5 Albert Street, and in the archive were a few photographs of her there, stood at an easel, a recognisable if unfinished version of the Edinburgh interior before her. These photographs are perhaps less about personal records and the creation of a public image. Here is an artist at work in their studio, caught at the precise moment inspiration had struck. And so it's interesting that Barnes Graham chose this particular painting to embody that burgeoning professional identity. The photograph, like the painting itself, presents itself as unrehearsed, stumbled upon, private, when both were in fact staged, studied, meticulous representations of an artist coming into being through a space capable of accommodating a union of art and life. In common with other women artists of the 20s and 30s, Barnes Graham was interested in establishing her own visual language of domesticity, one which was less about polish or perfection, drudgery or submission, the spectre of idealised femininity which had haunted the previous generation, but about spontaneity and pleasure. Accordingly, what prevails in this work is a sense of experiment and play, conveyed through a palette of bright, whimsical yellows and pinks, in the rough application of paint directly onto unprimed canvas, in the carefully unsymmetrical haphazard composition, and in the structuring grid left visible beneath the scene's thin coat of colour, a trace of Barnes Graham's process. The work revels in Barnes Graham's still relatively new independence and in all the routines and responsibilities that sprung from it. A table is simply and informally set for one, and potted plants flourish around it. Both the self and the environment are being cultivated, nourished. The air of unfinishedness lends the work a feeling of potential and expresses something of the freedom and possibility that Barnes Graham surely experienced at this moment on the threshold of a new life having graduated from the Edinburgh College of Art that summer, now applying for travel grants and plotting towards the future. There's also a self-conscious alignment with modernist art. The parched, luminous colour and shallow pictorial space resemble the post-impressionist interiors of Matisse and Bernard. Painted by men, the home could acquire an avant-garde allure, but Barnes Graham was developing her voice as an artist during a time when women painting those same spaces found their work ignored, trivialised, judged by critics as merely feminine, a word synonymous with unimaginative, unintelligent, limited. So for me, Edinburgh Interior is a radical statement about gender, genre and value, elevating that which had previously withheld attention and acclaim, insisting upon the meaningfulness of women's spaces and the most habitual feelings and behaviours they housed. What's striking is that Barnes Graham did not feel the need to make this statement again. Later interiors are more firmly situated within the professional space of the studio. Barnes Graham chose, it seems, to strip her work completely of femininity's most conventional associations, and that process might be mapped onto her movement from figurative art to abstraction. This soft, playful, quietly rebellious work of 1937 yielded to dozens of coolly analytical abstractions in the decades that followed. In the mid-century, abstraction was, even more so than the rest of the art world, dominated by men. And perhaps Barnes Graham felt that in order to be an ambitious contender in that hyper-masculine domain, to make the art she understood to be her real passion and talent, then she would have to abandon the style and feelings represented by the Edinburgh interior for good. 